Hello, hello Helsinki, good afternoon. You know, for Estonians, it's like a second home. You just uh, step into the ferry and it, it takes you two hours and you hear some really happy uh, to visit Helsinki every time and uh, glad to talk about the blockchain. And uh, trust, why do I talk about trust when uh, we uh, talk about the blockchain? Let's go back in uh, time and, and with this, let's go further and, and drive to the future. Many, many centuries ago, uh, we had a life where the service provided by a human being to another human being. It doesn't matter where the, uh, if the service was a egg from the chicken that was grown by a human being, or, or was it a um, flower, or was it a, a, any kind of, of other service. But it was from one human being to the other human being. And only on the 14th century was the time when some kind of intermediates and intermediaries were introduced because the trading started to be from one continent to the other continents. And with this development, the ships and the storage houses and the traders um, had to trust somebody else than from one human being to the other human being. If I take the goods from China and export it to the Europe or import it to the Europe, there has, there has to be some middleman in between. And then this uh, chain of all kind of intermediaries has started to develop in the world. And if you think about the way we function today, it's about full of all kind of service providers actually between one human being and the other human being. And uh, the other interesting thing, if you think about it, then all those intermediates are something that human beings have created. Also, the, you have the, um, or, or any kind of business entities, or any shareholdings, or any banks, or anything, all are the fictions created by the human beings. And all of a sudden, we've reached to the point where we can't trust those intermediaries anymore. Because when you have so many service providers in the chain, then there's a high chance that one of those will break the trust, will break the train, uh, chain. Enron cases, Lehman Brothers cases, when we talk about the financial sector, there has been now the case of the Facebook, where we don't know, can we trust them, or, or can we not trust them? So, what have we done? So, we, we built, and, and what, what happened through the history, and I come from the stock market, so I was working as a CEO of NASDAQ in Estonia some, some years ago, and when we talk about the stock markets, then there's again so many intermediates in the stock markets. So what happens is that we built all those chains and we built all those intermediates into the technology. And decided that maybe this technology, maybe the electronic trading platforms, maybe the brokers, maybe they will solve the problem. And, um, or maybe not. Uh, until, um, this is one of the, the pictures I've used quite a lot when I present the, the value of the, the blockchain. Um, and, and maybe, maybe you've seen it as well, but I'll take a bit of a time to, to explain it and, and explain the value of the blockchain using the stock exchange example. When you think about the bank, when you think about the broker, when you think about any clearing, settlement, central bank, all those institutions, what they do, they provide the trust, very simply to say. They have the role of saying that my money is owned by me 
I do have 1,000 uh, euros in my bank account. They say that my assets belong to me, my securities belong to me. If I transfer my securities to somebody else through the stock market, then there's somebody else who says that uh, my securities have now landed to the other person's securities account, and their funds have been landed to my account. And there's so many institutions saying this tiny little thing that my assets belong to me. And, and if I would like to transfer it to somebody else, then again, those institutions need to be in place. And when we talk about the music industry, the same, quite many intermediates in between the songwriter and uh, the singer or the artist, um, the um, diamonds, uh, again, the same thing, how can you trust the source and, and the seller? And, and this is why I think that the blockchain is going to be a big thing. Because blockchain has one and only role, which is to provide this trust instead of institutions. Recording my assets and through my wallet, I can get access and I can hold all those assets. The second thing why I like the blockchain is that the blockchain um, is not controlled by anyone. We can question the Bitcoin blockchain and, and the power of some of the miners. I like the blockchain because it is global. And, and I think the new life and the way we're going to live in the future, and already actually right now, is we live globally. I've listened to the speeches before and, and all the IoT and, and all the other solutions. We are not just here in Helsinki, but all of a sudden, through our devices, we are connected to the rest of the world. I sometimes hear my uh, kids playing uh, Fortnite. They have the headphones on, and all of a sudden, they start speaking English. And I ask, what do you do? What, what, why do you speak in English? And they said, yeah, there's a Danish guy who popped in and, and we started to play in English because we wanted to play it together. So, so because of the technology, we are connected. And, and this is going to be maybe the, the biggest challenge for the financial sector where I'm from, is that we need to be able to provide the services globally. And, and this is what blockchain has given to us. And Funderbeam has built a stock market for the uh, private companies, so we can um, raise funds for the private companies, which is like IPO in the stock market, from investors anywhere in the world, because we don't have the local brokers in the value chain. We can invest in the companies anywhere in the world. And in, when investors trade with those investments, they can also do the trades across the borders. We have investors from 108 countries on the platform and, and trading, and it's quite okay that the Japanese investor has been invested to the company in, in uh, Croatia, for example, and, and then sold some of the investments to the investor from uh, Brazil. But um, the other thing, what I like with the blockchain is that the blockchain uh, has given companies a tool uh, to create value on quite different layers than just the equity layer. If you think about the values of your companies where you work, then you could actually calculate the value of the company into the equity level, into one share level. Most of the CFOs work on the company's valuation based on the financial um, uh, status of the companies. And you report all the numbers calculated to different, uh, uh, different metrics. But when you think about the, the blockchain and, and the possibility of the blockchain, then with this, oh, right, it should be reach. <laughs> with uh, this, uh, you could engage people uh, investing in your company from anywhere in the world. And investing into the company means that the investment doesn't have to be only on the equity level. 
Um, I hope you, you all know about uh, ICOs and initial coin offering. So initial coin offering enables companies to issue the coins that sort of become acting as a securities or as a incentivizing of, of the uh, communities being around uh, the companies. And with the coin issuing, every single company can say that once you invest into my coin, then you get something. And it doesn't only have to be an access to the equity. So what can it be then? It can be access to the community. You might invest into the membership of some of the big groups. Imagine if you could have a membership token of the uh, Facebook. And the more community members and the more uh, Facebook users contribute into the uh, community, the more the coin raises in the value. So actually, you can have a coin that represents the power of the community, not the, commu uh, not the equity anymore. And for example, in Fonderbeam, uh, um, we have, an, again, investors from 108 countries. We issued our own tokens on the platform, and, and it's trading. We have um, a guy from Japan who all of a sudden built the Japanese language website uh, to us. We have a guy from uh, UK who started to build out uh, our markets in, in UK. We have uh, another guy from Germany who is now building up a German market without us asking them to do it because they invested in our company. They have a community, basically a community token, and they are now contributing back because they would like to do it. With the initial coin offering, you could invest into the protocol layer. Imagine if 20 or 30 years ago, you could invest into the internet uh, protocols, HTTP, for example. And with all of this, whatever, whoever builds anything on top of this protocol, you, as an investor of the protocol, not the equity or not the investor of any kind of internet company, you could start contributing and consuming the value of investing into the protocol. Filecoin ICO is, is, for example, one of the very good examples where you could invest into the protocol layer. And Ethereum, obviously, is, is the first uh, protocol layer investment as well. So you could invest into the technology, and for the investors, it means that um, you have to understand the code. It's not just about the numbers and the Excel sheet and the market side, but you have to understand the code. Um, you could also incentivize investors by investing into the impact tokens. Um, one of my favorite stories, and I saw the photos, unfortunately, just this morning, but I would have otherwise put it up on the screen. The beaches around the world, the most wonderful beaches, in uh, Bali and, and different parts of Indonesia and Thailand and, and also south uh, part of uh, America have, have by now been covered by tons of plastic. Just amazing amounts of plastic. And uh, for example, one of the projects around this ocean plastic and ocean waste has been carried on by Adidas. I don't know if, if uh, you've read about it, but Adidas partnered up with one of the startups who collected the waste from the ocean. And from this ocean waste and the plastic, they made the bottoms of the shoes. And, and those were one of the most wonderful pair of shoes Adidas ever uh, produced. And, uh, and those shoes were always subscribed or the order of the shoes were always subscribed. I also tried, but they couldn't uh, get uh, hold of it. Now, with the impact, what some projects could do is to issue the tokens of collecting of the ocean waste. The more waste you collect, the more tokens you get in return. And, and with those tokens, when the oceans get better and better, the token or the price of the token raises because the tokens become tradable on the marketplace. Again, the value is not in the company uh, level, but it's about the impact uh, level. And blockchain as a technology, and especially the Ethereum blockchain, enables you to issue those tokens um, 
keep a track on the token, and the tokens become tradable. So the meaning of a security and the meaning of the investment because of the blockchain will change quite radically in the future. And if you would be an investor, or you would be a founder or a CEO of the company, then you might as well start thinking already now, where will you invest for the future, or where will you, as a manager of the company, start creating the value around it? Which will be the most valuable asset of your company, and then you can as well use the blockchain technology and issue some coins or the tokens around it. But don't misuse the trust of the investors, because the initial coin offerings or the ICOs that are issued right now or, or uh, published right now are very much, you know, swimming in the waters of, of, the, of the scam. And, and the last one, which uh, will be changed, I wouldn't say not specifically because of the blockchain technology, but uh, also blockchain will give a uh, impact on it. It's the diversity, and I don't mean just the gender diversity, but the diversity in very many meanings, giving access to the resources to those who didn't have the access. Um, giving easy to manage tools for the different, uh, different age groups, different cultural groups, different religious groups, and also different uh, genders, two genders. So um, think of a blockchain technology as an enabler. Think of uh, blockchain technology as the technology that might start solving the problem of the trust, cutting out some of the intermediates from the value chain and making us back to where we were, from human being to the other human being. Thank you. <laughs>